When it comes to long range premium electric SUVs, it's pretty hard to beat the entire package of a Tesla Model Y. This nameplate has been around for only a couple years, but it's been a huge global success for Tesla with the company selling nearly 400,000 units in America last year. Now, when you do such high sales volume, it's only a matter of time before another brand has you in their crosshairs. And for 2024, Chevrolet has the perfect alternative with the introduction of this vehicle. This is the 2024 Equinox EV. It shares only but a name with its ICE counterpart. And this vehicle is built off of a dedicated EV architecture it offers up to 319 miles of range, and later this year, it'll start at under $35,000. So today we're actually out here in Auburn's Michigan to finally get behind the wheel of this new Equinox EV. And the big question I want to answer, for those of you who have been looking for a long range, upscale electric SUV, has Chevy finally built a vehicle for the masses? Stay tuned to find out. Now, the Chevrolet Equinox name has consistently been the second best-selling vehicle for Chevy here in America, so it makes sense for the company to use a well-known name for a very important electric vehicle. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling, let's go ahead and pop the hood here because the million-dollar question with a lot of EVs, does it have a frunk? And as you can see, like so many other Altium branded vehicles, this vehicle does not have a frunk. But what you find underneath here is a single electric motor. So Chevy actually will launch this vehicle here in America with a choice of a single motor front-wheel drive or a dual motor all-wheel drive. This particular one here that I'm showing you is the single motor front-wheel drive. It's obviously the more price conscientious model and it's also going to give you the best range. So we have one electric motor powering the front wheels delivering 213 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. That's a little bit more power versus what Chevy initially quoted about a year and a half ago. They originally said it was going to have around 210 horsepower. All models will use an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that's very similar of course to the battery pack that we find in like the Chevrolet Blazer EV and the Honda Prologue. Um, it all goes out through a one-speed reduction gear transmission. If you guys want all-wheel drive, a second induction motor at the back that doesn't have any magnets, that's very efficient, will add uh, or will increase the power to 288 horsepower and 333 pound-feet of torque. Now, Chevy says with the front-wheel drive architecture, you'll get to zero to 60 in around eight seconds or slightly under eight seconds. We'll try it out when we get this vehicle out on the road. Uh, the Equinox EV still will be able still able to be tow or you can still tow with it it'll tow a maximum of 1500 pounds and chevy didn't actually have the curb weight figures just yet for this vehicle uh, but they did say that um or they didn't say anything i if you look at the honda prologue it'll actually have a curb weight of around 4900 pounds i'd estimate this vehicle should have something similar the all-wheel drive will probably come in maybe 100 or 200 pounds uh heavier but let's go ahead and close up the hood here and talk about the exterior styling of the vehicle because if you guys saw this car, our first look for it, uh, our, for the vehicle back in Detroit about a year and a half ago, you'll know that the design is pretty familiar, but at the same time, it also looks a lot more modern and fu futuristic because even though this car shares a name with the Equinox, the gas powered one, it actually is built off of their Altium architecture. So Chevy really had a lot of flexibility here to kind of start from scratch. You can see the front fascia has an interesting design language here where it has that signature full LED light bar. You can see there's also an LED a daytime running light and LED turn signal. This portion of the DRL is not on, and that's because the turn signal is on, so it kind of turns that side off. Once you shut off the turn signal and turn it back on, you can see the headlights are a separate portion here. A lot of other Chevy products are doing the split divorce headlights, so it's an LED low and LED high beam. No actual fog lights on the vehicle, and you can see you also have this interesting kind of diamond texture or triangle texture in the actual front fascia where there would be a grill. There's also like a carbon fiber look material here inset into the actual headlight assembly. There's also this really interesting air intake here where I don't particularly love the way this design is, but again, sub styling is always subjective. This, this particular model that we're showing you here is a 2LT trim, so it's the least expensive one that you can get currently. Uh, and it's painted in this really interesting shade called Galaxy Gray. Now, if you guys go for the RS trim, uh, the RS trim will have a sportier looking front fascia and different wheels. Uh, we'll try to see if we can get a walk around on that vehicle to show you guys that very briefly. Now, moving around the side profile of this car, you can see the Equinox EV is supposed to be a compact SUV, but I have to say, it's really more like a mid-size vehicle because its wheelbase is around 116 inches long. Its overall length is around 190.5 inches long. So this is a good five or five to eight inches longer than a lot of other compact SUVs. This is, if you're looking at something like the Honda Prologue, which shares an architecture with this vehicle, uh, the Prologue is around two inches shorter, but the Blazer EV is gonna be around five inches longer versus the Equinox EV. So it has a really nice size to it, and you guys will see that 
later on during the interior when we talk about the interior proportions. Now, right here is where you're gonna charge the vehicle. You can see it has the standard J1772 plug with a CCS combo. Eventually, Chevy will adopt the NAC plug that Tesla uses that every other brand is going to use at some point. This vehicle will accept a maximum of 150 kilowatts on a DC fast charger. Like I said earlier, 319 miles of range for this model. Go for all wheel drive, it'll drop it to 285. So still very impressive numbers. That's among the tops in the segment. On a level three charger, Chevy says you'll add about 70 miles of range in about 10 minutes, or it'll take you from 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes. This car has an 11 kilowatt onboard charger. Now, there was at one point an available 19.2 kilowatt onboard charger, but I couldn't find it on the option list. So I think Chevy may have taken that off the table, but still on a level two, this should take around 10 hours to charge uh, at your home on a 48 amp. So that should be plenty fast for most people. Now you can see the wheels. I'm gonna talk about the wheels on this LT trim. These are the standard 19 inch wheels that you get with this trim. It's riding on a 245 by 55 R19. You can see it has like an aerodynamic directional uh, design to it. It even has a six lug, which again shows you that this is a heavy electric vehicle architecture. If you guys go for the RS, it'll have an even bigger 21 inch wheel with a 275 with fat tire. So uh, much fatter tire uh, versus the uh, LT, but this is gonna give you more sidewall cushioning. You have an all independent suspension, no adaptive dampers. You can see, I also like the fact that Chevy paints the wheel arch trim here. Maybe a little bit of chrome on the side. The RS again will give you a little bit of a sportier edge to it. Uh, looking at the rest of the side profile, you can see the door handles. They do offer like a pop-out style door handle, which is nice and flushly integrated when it's not, or uh, when the vehicle is locked. You also have these integrated silver aluminum roof rails. My test car is missing the panoramic sunroof. That's an extra 1500 bucks. You can add it in as an a la carte option if you guys want that. There's a little bit of chrome trim along the side. And then from this angle over here, as you follow me to the rear, I think this is actually the more attractive angle of the new Equinox EV. There's a lot of Porsche-like design, like Macan design influence here, especially when you look at it from afar, if you cover up the, obviously the bow tie badge, you can see you have that same design with the full length LED light bar that goes across the entire rear end. You have uh, full LED tail lights. Although if you look at the RS trim, you'll actually have a sequential dynamic turn signal at the back. This LT, as you can see, does not have that feature. You have the sil or the traditional gold painted or gold accented a bow tie emblem. The RS will have a black accent. You have an integrated rear wiper here. Although I would have liked it if Chevy hit it underneath the rear uh, spoiler back here. And then down here, you can see the rear bumper is pretty traditional looking. It's not quite as aggressive, obviously, as if you're looking at the RS trim, you have these well-integrated parking sensors, backup camera. In fact, full 360 camera is standard on the 2LT trim, which is pretty impressive that they give you the full 360 camera function. Now, you also get a power lift gate that's hands-free as standard equipment on this trim. So lots of nice equipment that a lot of people want. You can see cargo space is pretty impressive. You have around 26 cubic feet of total storage space with the second row seats up. If you look underneath the floor here, you can see Chevy also gives you a pretty deep storage compartment where Sorry, my editor Rob's bag just kind of fell in there, but it's a really great spot to put his bag if you want to hide it away underneath here. If you want to fold down uh, the second row seats, um, you can't do it from back here. So you have to go to the side or you can actually just, I guess you can push this little lever here and push the seat down. That expands the cargo to around 57 cubic feet of space, which it's not obviously as much as like the gas powered Equinox. Uh, but I think for those of you who are looking in this space, it's going to have really competitive uh, figures. And really the only downside uh, compared to some rivals is the Equinox EV doesn't have a frunk. So the exterior of the Equinox EV certainly looks modern and sophisticated, but what about the interior? This is again where Chevy really focused a lot on technology, interior space, interior storage. This particular one that I'm showing you here has the black Evotex interior, which goes fine with the Galaxy Gray exterior. You can also get it with a sky cool gray light color interior. You can see the seats on this model here. Uh, they adjust in eight different ways with two-way lumbar here on the driver's side. It's a power adjustable seat. No memory seats, obviously. There is an upper uh, 3LT and 3RS trim that will give you heated and ventilated seats. On this 2LT, you'll just get three level heated seats. So again, there are a couple of features that this car is missing, but still I think heated seats are an important feature that I think people are gonna appreciate. And I also like how Chevy includes it on the middle 2LT trim like this particular model. Now this vehicle, as you get in, only has 6.4 inches of ground clearance, which is honestly on the low side. A lot of other vehicles will have at least seven, perhaps even eight inches of ground clearance. So the step-in feels a little bit lower, but it still feels a little bit like an SUV as I shut the door. The door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is built off of the Ultium dedicated BEV architecture. Now, uh, here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see it's Chevy's current intelligent access key where you have the unlock, lock, remote start, 
power lift gate and panic function. It also has, shows the Chevy badge on the back. No, no, no indication here to give you to let you know that this is like a special electric model. And then this vehicle is also one of the first Chevy vehicles to introduce basically keyless go. So there's no start stop button. All you have to do is sit your butt in the seat, keep the key fob on you, and then put your foot on the brake. Just like a Tesla or a Rivian, for example, the vehicle will turn on. It'll, you know, do the little traditional GM chime or bong. Uh, and then the car is basically ready to drive. It'll say ready in the instrument panel. And then uh, as of now, all Equinox EVs are going to come with this big infotainment system. So you have an 11 inch digital instrument cluster right in front of you. And then you have a massive 17.7 .7 inch touchscreen display here that has Google built in. It's Android Automotive. This is going to be standard on all versions of the Equinox EV for now. When they introduce the 1LT later this year, that's the one that has the $35,000 sub starting price. It'll have an 11 inch display. But you can see here in this tiny vehicle, this has the biggest display that you're going to find in the segment. So it's bigger versus the Mach-E versus versus the Model Y, versus the Nissan Aria, versus the ID4, versus the Ionic 5, Kia EV6. So this is fantastic. Chevy really is throwing out all of the tech features here. They're throwing you, they're giving you the kitchen sink, which I think is a fantastic thing. Now, as an inexpensive car, some of you may be wondering, how's the interior? Does it feel a little cheap? Well, this is where Chevy actually surprised me because uh, even on this 2LT trim, you can see the door panel has a really nice soft touch injection molded plastic. I actually love the way this feels. I was just in the Silverado EV yesterday, and I have to say this material feels nicer versus that $100,000 truck. So that's a little surprising to see. You have this really interesting blue slash gray paint plastic trim that's kind of on the door panel and the rest of the dash. You have a padded area here where I'd rest my elbow with this kind of fake Evotex leather material. The windows are one touch up down for the driver. The other windows are one touch down, but they're not one touch up. You have the typical GM switch gear here where it has a relatively high quality feel. No power folding mirrors. That's again where some of the higher trims or more expensive vehicles will come into play. And then looking at the dashboard, you can see that same material here is also carried over here on the dash where it has a nice soft touch injection molded plastic where it has a nice graining material more of that blue and like gray uh, painted plastic over on the dash, which also is followed by some aluminum look trim. There's also interchangeable ambient lighting in this car. Chevy says there's 26 different colors. You can also set it to the drive mode. I'll have to wait till I get one back home for a week to kind of show you guys what that looks like. But I love the fact that it's included at this trim, even at this lower price back bracket. Down here, you can see there's single zone automatic temperature control. If you go for the RS trim, it'll roll in dual zone climate control. So that's something to keep in mind. Down here, there's a big storage compartment where it looks like there, there would be a wireless phone charging pad here. My phone fits perfectly. But for some odd reason, Chevy doesn't offer wireless charging on this vehicle. So I think that's a really silly omission. I also like the fact that you have nice padded materials here. You have this floating center console with two USB-C charging ports. You have more of that blue silver painted trim here, which I applaud them for not using piano black, but I think this area here could have used a slightly different material. I think it's just too much of that strange blue you know, intersecting with the black, but that's just my personal uh, taste. Uh, you can see the center console here is nice and padded. When I open this up, you can see there's a storage area. You can lift that up. It gives you an even deeper storage area, uh, which is a nice touch. And then going back to the screen here, this system, as you guys know, uh, is their newest infotainment system, and it's lacking Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is kind of a silly omission. But at the same time, the native system, Chevy says, is much improved, and you aren't going to miss CarPlay or Android Auto at all. So you can see, if I click on that, Waze is already integrated into the actual display. So if you guys use Waze for your GPS function, you can see this is essentially the same thing that you're going to find on your smartphone, but it also is already well integrated into the car. So that's fantastic. If you want to listen to Spotify, it's already integrated over here. You can still connect your phone via Bluetooth, which will allow you to stream Apple Music, for example, right from your phone. It'll still read text messages out loud to you. You can also reply to text messages with your voice. So all the functionality from CarPlay is already integrated into the system. And that's exactly why Chevy says you don't need the actual CarPlay functionality. It also has voice commands. So I can say things like, OK, Google, take me to the nearest Starbucks. OK, Starbucks, here we go. So you can see it automatically found the nearest Starbucks. It even tells me how far it is, how much charge I'm going to have left. And if you guys, you know, plan to take a longer road trip in this vehicle, it'll actually direct you on your route to charging stations and it'll tell you how long you need to stop there for. So that's exactly what Tesla systems do. So it's great to see that Chevy, again, is kind of pushing the envelope with technology. And I think this is going to be a viable replacement for people who, again, you know, have had a Tesla or, you, you know, you find the CarPlay function to be annoying at times. This is a really well integrated system. I'll have to wait until I live with one for a week to see if I actually miss it. You can see the map display. That's Google 
which is basically the same thing that's on your phone. It's really quick and snappy. You can see the software, the processing power is fantastic. So I think that's where Chevy really got it right. Uh, your drive mode selector is now in the screen. So you can see there's four different drive modes. There's also a my mode here. Your one pedal drive is via here, or it's also a shortcut button right here where you can turn it on and off. You can also set the level to off, normal, or high. Uh, and we'll talk about that later on during the driving scene. Your headlight controls are also located in the screen where you can basically just access it there very quickly. You can also shut off the car from here. You can go to other different settings, turn off your traction control, the dome light, your auto high beam assist, auto park assist. And then you can also pull up your full 360 camera, which you can see the graphics and resolution is also pretty good. You can also see a curb view there to keep you from scratching and curbing those wheels. And I just think that Chevy has done a really good job here with throwing in a lot of technology. I think people are going to expect a lot of this stuff. Uh, so you can see, I think that the system is really easy to use. I also appreciate the fact that there are still hard buttons. So you can see there's climate buttons here for the heated seats. That's where you access that. No heated steering wheel, you get that with the RS package. And then you can see there are uh, traditional buttons over here and knobs, which I really appreciate. The gear selector has been moved to right here on the turn signal stock or where this would be a wiper stock. The wiper stock's at the end over here. So I kick it up here, you can, that puts it into a drive or reverse, kick it down that goes into park and then push or drive and then push this P button here that goes into park. So relatively easy to use. It's pretty similar to what Tesla and Mercedes, for example, puts in a lot of their vehicles. In terms of the glove compartment, you can see the glove box is a bin style. It's stamped, but not lined with felt. It offers a good amount of storage. There's also additional storage underneath here, which is a great place to put like a purse or your keys or wallet, uh, whatever other knickknacks you may have. And then above me here, you can see a good amount of headroom space without the sunroof. You can see um, it has a woven material for the headliner. You have LED map lighting throughout the um, interior as well. And uh, the seats in this vehicle, I do also appreciate how comfortable and supportive they are. I also like the perforated leather. They don't really hold you in place very nicely, but uh, again, you can get a different seat material if you guys go for the RS trim. And then finally over here on the steering wheel, uh, my particular test car has Super Cruise. So it has the status bar over here with the indicator that watches your face. The steering wheel itself also has a manual tilt and telescoping adjustment, which allows you to get a good amount of adjustability and range. There's a paddle on the back here for maximum regen. And then you can see here, uh, you have your buttons for your cruise control, for your audio controls. And then I, I lied earlier, this vehicle does have a heated steering wheel. The button's actually over here. So you don't have to go to the RS to get the heated steering wheel, which I think is a nice touch. But overall, the interior uh, is relatively upscale in its feel, has comfortable seats, impressive amounts of tech. And really the only thing that it's missing to make it perfect would be a heads up display and a wireless phone charging pad, which I really think is strange how Chevy is not including, especially uh, in this class of vehicle. Now moving to the back seat of the Equinox EV, this is where that long 116 inch wheelbase is gonna give you a plentiful amount of interior space. First thing I wanna show you guys, here's the way the seats fold down. When they fold down, it creates not a perfectly flat floor. It's a little bit of an incline, but uh, it does again, expand the cargo capacity to 57 cubic feet. These seats, they don't recline, however. So that's uh, something that I th believe some competitors offer like the Hyundai Ionic 5, but still when you get back here, you do find a pretty good amount of leg room. Now shutting the door, you can see the door has that same solid sounding thunk as the front seat. Uh, and you can see material quality back here is hard touch plastic. So it's not quite as nice as the front seat area. The grading material feels fine. You have more of that blue and gray plastic here with the aluminum accented door handle, nice and padded here. The window control, again, auto down, but not auto up. I like the fact that you also get tinted windows. And then in terms of the legroom space, you can see there's 38 inches of legroom back here, which is among the best in the segment. I think the Ionic 5 has similar mounts. The Model Y has similar mounts. You have two USB-C charging ports. Rear seat air vents here, a little bit of a storage cubby over here. You have two uh, map pockets and then the floor is completely flat. And that's because this is built off of a dedicated EV architecture. So you can fit three people across. There's also an armrest here that folds down and gives you two cup holders. And then as you can see, plenty of headroom space. My uh, editor, Rob, who's behind the camera, he's six foot one. And he actually said he had plenty of headroom space as well. So the back seat, aside from uh, it, you know, missing heated back seats back here and the rear door doesn't open quite as big as, you know, you might need it to be if you put a car seat, there is plenty of space back here. So I think families are gonna find a lot to like with this Equinox EV. So here we are behind the wheel of the first ever Chevrolet Equinox EV. We're driving the front wheel drive model and Chevy says this model should get to 60 in around eight seconds. So let's see, go ahead and see what we can actually get in the real world for our testing. All right, so on a 
perfect, almost perfectly level surface, we got 7.97 seconds, which is pretty much right on target with what Chevy claims. Now remember, if you guys want more speed, you can get the all-wheel drive version, which should uh, lower that zero to 60 time to just under six seconds. Now technically, we've already driven that powertrain in the uh, Honda Prologue and the Chevrolet Blazer. The two vehicles essentially share the same battery pack and power outputs with 288 horsepower, but still 213 horsepower for this model uh, and 236 pound-feet of torque. It's going to be plenty fast for most people. Uh, remember, this car is supposed to be like an affordable everyday EV that you can drive you know, to and from to do your errands, but also still this gives you around 319 miles of range, which we are starting out the drive, by the way, with almost 100% charge. We're at 97% now. It's showing 311 miles of range. When we first got in the vehicle, it was showing around 319. So bang on with the EPA's targets, and I'll have to wait until I get one back home for a full week to test out that claim in the real world. But overall, my first impressions of the Equinox EV are very positive. I mean, this vehicle is built off of a dedicated Ultium architecture, so it's not sharing the new or the ICE platform with the you know current generation Equinox or the upcoming 2025 model. And this thing just has a really you know a premium smoothness that you definitely didn't get in the Chevrolet Bolt. So if you guys are coming from a Chevrolet Bolt or Bolt EV, this is going to feel considerably more like an upscale vehicle. It's nice and wide feeling. It sits nice and uh, it sits lower, and it just feels more substantial. I will say that the visibility out of the Equinox EV isn't the best. You've got this really expansively long dashboard and you also have this thick A-pillar that gives you a small little side window there, but I actually ended up losing a couple of pedestrians as we were driving around uh, Detroit on this early Saturday morning to kind of you know get a feel for this car. But um, the ride quality of the Equinox EV is also impressive. Now we are driving the 2LT trim. It's the cheapest trim that's currently available on the Equinox EV. Eventually there'll be a 1LT that'll be even cheaper than this and it also will come with a slightly smaller battery pack I believe because it has less range but we're on these 19 inch wheels on a 245 width tire and it just has a nice smooth ride. There's also not a single squeak and rattle in this car which I really appreciate. Um, we do have obviously the RS trim is available as well. If I have a chance to drive it, I might, I will, but if I don't, we're on this pretty short drive. I'll have to wait until we get one back home. But that model has a 21 inch wheel. So that is, that should, you know, degrade the ride quality slightly, but we also still have an all independent suspension, no adaptive dampers, anything like that. Uh, but you know, because this is, you know, an electric vehicle, you have basically all the torque available all at once. And I also appreciate the sound in sport mode. It makes a nice little, you know, enhanced fake sound noise uh, that kind of gives you some kind of visceral feel. But anytime you put your foot down, it just pushes you back in the seat with that instant torque. It's very, you know, smooth as well. There's not a, there's not a hint of lag, which I've definitely felt lag in other competing EVs, like where they kind of ramp the power up slowly. This is not really the case in this car. I feel like it gives you all the power immediately. And I also really appreciate Chevy's one pedal drive feature. As soon as I lift off the, the throttle, it starts to slow down. This is in normal mode and it actually gives you true one pedal driving where it actually will come to a full stop. There is also a high setting if you guys want even more aggressive regen. I actually think Chevy's high setting is too aggressive for my taste. I think the normal is the perfect balance uh, to where you don't have to use the brake pedal very much at all. Uh, the seats in this model, uh, these are the leather seats that you come with the 2LT. I don't know if the 1LT will have a leather or a cloth material, but I do find the seats to be relatively comfortable. The padding is nice. There's not really much in terms of bolstering. I'll have to see um, if the RS has a slightly more aggressively bolstered seat. Uh, this model has the black interior. You can also get it with like a sky cool gray, which I think would look great with this galaxy, galaxy gray exterior. And then of course, this car also comes with Super Cruise. Now that is part of a $2,700 option package. Uh, if you guys don't get Super Cruise, you do have their full suite of driver assistance. So like automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, uh, adaptive cruise. Adaptive cruise is finally standard. Usually GM makes you pay extra for adaptive cruise and then extra again for, again for Super Cruise. So I like the way they've kind of structured that. Think of Super Cruise as like Tesla's version of, you know, full self-driving uh, even though or full self-driving capability because even though they don't really give you that yet but this actually gives you full hands-free driving it'll auto execute automatic lane changes so it's the newest system that we've tested in other gm products so i think that's a game-changing feature that a lot of consumers are going to appreciate when they're looking at this you know compact uh, suv segment now in terms of the handling dynamics uh, I have it in its sport setting now. The steering is pretty light, um, but it does offer a good deal amount of precision. It just doesn't offer much in terms of the feedback that you're looking for, but uh, perhaps the RS will kind of give you a little bit more of that. The suspension itself definitely feels a little bit soft. Every time I put 
put my foot down, it kind of like squats down and it reminds you that this is still a relatively heavy SUV, which by the way, they, they didn't have the actual curb weight figures for us just yet. I'm gonna estimate this car is probably under, just a smidge under 5,000 pounds. And I'm estimating that because of, we know the weight of the Honda Prologue. The Honda Prologue is a little bit bigger than this car, but it offers the same powertrain, front wheel drive powertrain with the you know 85 kilowatt hour battery pack. And Honda quotes that curb weight at that vehicle of like 4,900 pounds. So I'm gonna say this is probably 4,800 pounds because it's just a little bit smaller than the Prologue. So it's certainly heavy. I mean, if you guys are coming from a Bolt, the Bolt is easily like a thousand, no, 1,500 pounds lighter than this car. So but at the same time, you're getting a much more substantial vehicle that charges faster, that feels a lot more premium. Not quite as quick as the Bolt, but that solves it if you guys go for the all-wheel drive model. But I'm just really impressed. I mean, for the amount of money that GM is charging, especially for this model that we're driving here, you get an EV that feels a lot more premium, that gives you the range that you're looking for, that 300 plus mile range figure. And even if you go to all-wheel drive, it drops it to 285. And you also get good ride quality, a quiet interior, impressive tech. Although I'll have to wait until I get one back home to try it out without, or try the system out because remember, it lacks Apple CarPlay, but it has Google built in. It also will do route, print, route planning. So if you put in a destination, it'll tell you how much charge it'll have left, and then it'll tell you how long to stay at that charger uh, when you stop at those chargers on your way to your route. Um, but overall, I think for those of you who are, you know, in a Bolt or in a current generation gas-powered Equinox and you, get, you know, give this vehicle a test drive, you're going to find plenty to like with this Equinox EV. So here in America, the Equinox nameplate is one of the top selling compact SUVs in the ICE category, in the internal combustion category. So it's no surprise to me that Chevy would leverage the Equinox name for this very important EV. And after spending the day driving the new Equinox EV, I have to say, I have driven a lot of variants of the Altium architecture, but this one actually may be my favorite. And it's because of the entire package that Chevy offers. I mean, obviously as an enthusiast, I prefer something that's a lot quicker with all wheel drive, uh, but the package that Chevy offers here, even the front wheel driver architecture, as you guys saw, zero to 60 in around 7.9 seconds was respectably quick for about 90 or maybe 80% of people. Obviously, if you want all wheel drive, that'll shorten the zero to 60 time to just under six seconds. The range of this vehicle, I'll have to wait until I test one back home to actually see if it actually does that in the real world. But still, it was showing around 319 miles at 99% state of charge. So that's very impressive, especially again, considering the price, the interior tech in this car as well. This one is an early pre-production model, but for the most part, the screen works flawlessly. I love the integration of Waze and Spotify, even though it's lacking the CarPlay functionality. Again, I'm confident that once I spend a week with this vehicle, I'll probably not even miss it because there are so many people out there, as you guys know, with a Tesla and Teslas and Rivians don't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and they're all reliant, of course, on that excellent native system. So I think Chevy did a great job by going to Google and giving us those excellent voice commands to really give you the infotainment system that, again, is among the largest in the class. The rear seat also offers plenty of space. The cargo area is competitive and in terms of the charging speed it's pretty much average i mean obviously you can look at an ionic 5 or kia ev6 that'll give you more in terms of the uh, charging speeds but they don't give you quite as much range as this vehicle does and i think range is going to be king as well as the price because if you guys are looking to get your hands on this vehicle they are heading to dealerships as we speak and the equinox ev for now is going to start at this trim level that i'm showing you here so this is the most affordable one at the 2lt trim my particular test car with the galaxy gray and the Super Cruise option for an additional $2,700 comes to an as tested price of $45,995. The base price of the 2LT is $43,245. So just under 46 grand is a pretty good deal. Now, if you guys are looking for an even cheaper Equinox EV, you can wait for the 1LT in front wheel drive, which will be coming, they said, later this year. That'll have a starting price of $34,995. Now, I also expect the 1LT to have a slightly smaller battery pack because I think that model will have around 250 miles of range. Again, it's not 319, but 250 is still a respectable amount for a base powertrain, especially when you look at the starting price of under $35,000. Because remember, this vehicle is built in Mexico and it qualifies for the full $7,500 federal tax credit. So if you factor in the $46,000 price tag and the tax credit, you can get this car that I'm showing you here for under $40,000, which is a screaming deal. I mean, the affordable car in the segment is like the ID4. Uh, there's also the Tesla Model Y. And this vehicle actually undercuts the Tesla by around $1,700 to $5,000, especially when you're looking at the top end. If you want to fully load out an Equinox EV, you can build them already. And they start uh, for a loaded RS trim with all-wheel drive. Those are going to be around uh, $55,000 to kind of keep that in mind. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Chevrolet Equinox EV. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.